it's your boy ABNG be back with another reaction video. Today we got Mr. Nightmare, three disturbing true retail stories. Now, uh, I'm not gonna react to all three stories in this one video. The video is 11 minutes, 47 seconds. I'm gonna get, make it short. I'm gonna just do one today. I'm gonna try and put out two videos before I go to work. Um, but I, cho I chose this one because I used to work in retail. I did retail for five years. So, hey, I said, why not, right? So, what uh, further do, I'm going to jump to this bad boy, ABGQ. You know what to do. Let's roll. Story one. CBS. I work at a CVS open 24 hours a day. I've been working at this location for three years now, and I'm one of the higher-ups. I agreed to take on the overnight shifts because I believe it helps my chances of getting another promotion and I like to be on my boss's good side. There would only be one employee working the 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. shift, because wow. that's all that's really needed. Once the pharmacy opens at 9 a.m., that's when business usually picks up. The two employees before me left after I was set up. At my hours, so few customers come in that my job varies from cash register to simply stock working. The beeper at the front door that would go off would alert me when a customer would enter, so I'd know when to go back to the register and wait. A few hours into my shift, I went back to the register to check my phone which I had charging, and I had a new voicemail from an unknown number. I pulled it up and listened. It was some weird voice on the other end that I couldn't tell belonged to a male or female, and I couldn't understand what they were saying, like the sound quality was terrible. The transcription was unavailable for that reason. Obviously I just ignored it because everyone gets weird calls once in a while. As I continued doing stock work. My phone started to go off. I pulled out my phone and saw a bunch of texts from that number that just called. The first text said, call back when you can. The second one said, I know you're at work, I'm coming to visit. The third one said, what time are you working till? I had no idea who this could be. I texted back, who the hell is this? The typing bubble popped up for like 20 seconds. Then it went away, they didn't respond to that. Okay, a uh, little unnerving, yes, but I still had to go about my work. Eventually, I heard the ding by the front door, alerting me someone entered, so I went back to the register and waited. I didn't see anyone walking around, though, and I waited there for quite a while, actually. Eventually, I just decided, okay, that's enough waiting, and went back to stocking shelves. I'd say it was around 2 a.m., a couple hours into my shift. I got a new cart full of items from the back section, this time beauty products, the second aisle in the store. I brought the cart over there, and noticed a woman in the corner of the next aisle over, the first aisle. I stepped into that aisle and looked down, asking if she needed any help. She was looking down at one of the products in the corner. She didn't acknowledge me. Didn't know if she heard me or not, but I just felt awkward, so I left her alone. I walked back to the register just to wait there for her to finish up, and then I started getting more texts from that number. I was basically getting spammed with random messages that made no sense, except one that said, I'm here. So I said screw it and I called the number. I heard a ringing sound coming from inside the store and my heart started beating twice as fast. I felt a heavy feeling in my throat. I canceled the call and the ringing stopped. I brought myself to walk Turn over to that last out. aisle again where the ringing was coming from. That woman was still there in that corner. I yelled, joke's over, I'm calling the cops, whoever you are. I almost knew it had to be some girl I knew playing a prank on me. I went back around the counter because for some reason I felt safer there. I really didn't want to call the police though. Instead I called my best friend who picked up on the first try. I asked him to think of anyone we knew with brunette hair who had my number and would be playing a prank on me like this. He guessed a few names, but based on the body shape of that woman, it was none of them. My friend told me to just stop being a pussy since it was a girl. I told him, Damn, all right, bro. whatever, and hung up the phone. I was about to suck it up and walk over there when I noticed her, peering half of her head from around the corner of the beauty aisle. She had to be kneeling down too because the shelf in that aisle is lower than the rest. The first thing I noticed was blood trickling down her cheeks. She was smiling and I heard her making these fucked up laughing sounds. Oh, hell no. It looked like she cut the skin on her cheeks right next to her lips. And this was when I realized she wasn't our age. She looked like she was anywhere from 30 to 40 took one step closer and I recognized her. It 
was this lady with serious mental issues who had DM'd me with a fake account before. And as far as I knew, she was dangerous and was supposed to be in some psychiatric center. Uh -uh. She must have gotten my number through my Instagram, which I have set as a public figure profile, which includes my phone number. Seeing half her bloody face peering at me, smiling, made me want to yak. I yelled at her to get away or I'd stab her. Of course, a complete bluff. I ran to one of the back aisles and hid from her, and I only sighed a breath of relief when I heard the beep of the front door go off. I went to go check if she was still there, but she wasn't. And so I called 911 and had the police take a report, showed them the CCTV footage, and warned them of her name and that she had serious mental issues. The officers were very nice and told me they'd be in the immediate area in case she returned. I blocked the number she was texting me from, and I like to think the police contacted her family. Boy, that sounds crazy stuff. Yo. Matter of fact, his friend called him a pussy. <laughs> He's like, bro, stop being a pussy. <laughs> like, damn, bro. Like, I'm probably about to die in the store and you tell me that? Bro, like, supposedly you got a gun. I don't have a gun. I'm at work. <laughs> what would y'all do in that situation? That's crazy. She got blood coming down her face. Hell no, bro. Uh-uh. Cause soon that she would have, I heard that ringing in the phone, in the, the phone ringing in the store. I would have hung that phone up, up in my phone aside, and just get you to try to call it back. But then again, she know that's my number, so you know, I'd have been called her, please get her ass on up out here. But um, y'all let me know y'all thought of the video down in the comment section down below. Uh, I'll do part two and part three tomorrow and upload them. Um, yeah, I didn't think the video was gonna be this long, seven minutes long. So without uh, further ado, hey bitch cool, no do we are out of here. Make sure you hit that thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, and peace. Yeah. Lil' Dilly from the bottom of the mouth I ain't gotta have a strap I still get him with the rap Hating Dilly, man, you gotta be an idiot